Okay, everyone, here is what non-caloric sweeteners did to our blood glucose and ketones. So a month or so ago, we tested fat, adding fat to our coffee, mm -hmm. uh, different things. And that was good with everybody, except the one question we got from, seemed like every other person was, how are sweeteners gonna, in my coffee going to affect my, uh, uh, my ketones, my glucose, my intermittent fasting? Right. So, so we uh, went to round three of our, of our testing, and we... Uh, followed the same scientific method that we did with the fats. So we uh, came up with our hypothesis, tested our hypothesis, found our results, and came to our conclusions and uh, used the same methods, basically. So yeah. we uh, got up bright and early in the morning, pricked our fingers to test our baseline uh, blood glucose and ketones, then put our sweetener into our coffee and drank that down, tested our blood at 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and 120 minutes. Right, and we were doing a 16-8 intermittent fast with no exercise, no supplementation, yep. um, just what we normally do. So, um, so here's the bad news. For all of you people who use sweeteners, you might not be happy with us after these videos. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. All right, so on to our first hypothesis. If we put stevia in our coffee, it will not knock us out of ketosis or spike our blood glucose. Right, and this is pure stevia. This is not mixed with anything else. Right, so we put three-eighths of a teaspoon in our coffee because on the package, that is what it says is the equivalent of one tablespoon of sugar, which we tested in an earlier video. Right. And here are our results. So Becky's ketones were virtually unchanged. Um, she began at 1.2, went up a little bit to 1.4 at the 30 minute mark, stayed there at the 60 minute mark, and then back to 1.2 at the two hour mark. Uh, glucose, um, kind of about the same. She started at 84, went to 89 at 30, back to 82 at 60, and at 85 at 120. So those. She stayed almost exactly the same from the zero mark to the 120 mark. Right. So you would think that, you know, well, Stevie didn't have any uh, effect on right. me, and that would be one interpretation. Until. However, right, we, we had earlier tested my, my uh, glucose and ketones with just black coffee alone, nothing mixed into it. Right. And when we did that, uh, my glucose pretty much stayed up. Uh, remained the same right. starting at 74 and ending at 74. However, my ketones with just black coffee went from 1.2 up to 2.1. Right. So, does so, that mean that the stevia kept your ketones from going up? Yeah, that is a possibility, right? Maybe yeah. blunted my ability to produce ketones. Who, yeah. uh, who knows? It's one, yeah. one person. So, let's look at what your results showed for stevia. Right. So for stevia, I started at 0.6 ketones, which I was like really happy about because I'm rarely in ketosis first thing in the morning. Yeah. So then at the 30 minute mark, I was at 0.3. Made you happy. Made me very happy. And then I went to 0.4, and then I went to back to 0.3. Yeah. So it just slammed me, it slammed the door shut on me. Mm -hmm. um, ketones, you know, yeah. for sure. So glucose, I started at 94, I went up a little bit to 99, went down a little bit to 89, and then at the 120 mark, I was at 93, almost virtually the same glucose. So again, I didn't seem to have a big glucose change with this. Um, and, you know, my ketones definitely, you know, dropped me out of ketosis. Again, it wasn't, they weren't major numbers, kind of major for me, but not major in the, in the long run. Mm -hmm. But if we compare that to my findings with coffee, just mm -hmm. black coffee. Um, the black coffee didn't do anything for my ketones. Right. Okay. So that that's kind of a, a thing. But 
Black coffee alone, you know, not having anything else in that two-hour period, my blood glucose dropped 29 points. Right. So, yeah. again, it's like if you just look at this data, right. it doesn't seem to have done too much. Right. But when we compare our results with stevia to our results with black coffee, I had a better ketone response with black coffee alone. You had a better glucose response right. with coffee alone. So, our conclusions. Will stevia raise our glucose? I'd say no. No. Will it knock us out of ketosis? For me, no. For you, For me, yes. Yes. So, this one's going to depend on yeah. metabolisms, two very different metabolisms right here. Another in inconclusive result, um, I would, but compared to black coffee, I would say that I would not want to put it in my coffee. Right. It, I didn't like the taste either. Yeah, it was yucky. It was yucky. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, w can you use it during intermittent fasting? Uh, this is an inconclusive. It's going to probably depend on your metabolism, and there's a possibility it could be screwing with yeah. your metabolism. Yeah, and, and yeah, you're, you're taking in fats at the same time. If you have some liver metabolism going there that's messing, you know, insulin response or, mm -hmm. or glucose, you know, you, you could be backfiring a little bit. Yep. All right. So, so sorry about that. Next. <laughs> Next. Hypothesis number two. Coffee with sweet and low will not knock us out of ketosis or raise our blood glucose. All right. So they, we're doing the pink packet now. And uh, this is sweet and low. Sweet and low's first ingredient, interestingly enough, is dextrose which is one of those hidden names for sugar. And then we have saccharin, right. which is the artificial sweetener. Right. Uh, and saccharin kind of has a, a jaded past, or a checkered past, I should say. Um, kind of uh, came out when tab was the first thing that I remember it. Like, you know, that was a, a, a real early American diet soda. Yeah. Um, had a terrible aftertaste. <laughs> terrible. And, uh, and then it, it kind of got on the bad list, and now it's back kind of on the good list. And, it was probably un unfairly labeled because the, the studies they did were just grossly overdosed rats, and they found out it didn't translate to humans right. later on. So right. it, it, I think it, it's deemed as basically safe at this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. De still, still uh, definitely not health food. No. So we put a packet and a half of sweet and low in our coffee because uh, according to their official website, it is the equivalent of a tablespoon of uh, sugar. And what were our results? Our results with the sweet and low. Uh, you started your ketones, started at 1.1 that day. Mm -hmm. um, you actually went up a little bit over the 120 minutes. You went up to 1.4, uh, dropped a little bit to 1.2, and then at 120 you were at 1.6. Mm -hmm. So that was, those were pretty good results yeah. with that. Right. Um, your blood glucose started at 70, went up to 81, down to 74, and then at 120 it was 73. So. You know, from start to finish, you had a little bit of rise in your ketones, blood glucose about the same. Right, but then with black coffee, my ketones went up 0.9. The, here we went up 0.5. Eh, no, it's not a huge amount, but Yeah, different. that's okay. hard to say. If that was me, my numbers would be huge. But <laughs> these are my numbers. So I point started at 0.3. Um, <laughs> it went, stayed at 0.3, and then went down to 0.2, and then at 0.2, and... You know, I was happy. <laughs> um, my glucose started at 107, um, which is interesting. It seems like my glucose has gone up, like, mm. from the day before even. It's higher. Yeah, You're how doing about these that? sweeteners. Went to 117, down to 103, and then back to 118. Um, that's, I mean, yeah, that's awfully high. So, so here with uh, sweet and low... Uh, Keith's glucose actually went up 11 points. Right. With uh, black coffee, your, Keith, your glucose actually went down 29 points. That's right. a pretty significant difference. It is. Yeah. So and I, I've got to be at 118, you know, that, that's got to be pushing it that's to be getting it. an insulin response. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, yeah. that's getting up there. Right. All right. So, will sweet and low in your morning coffee uh, spike your blood glucose? Uh, well, it's yeah. possible. Possible, depending on the metabolism possible. again. Now, so different metabolism. That's dextrose in it too. It is so, yeah. right, which uh, it is basically sugar. Yeah. Uh, and will it knock us out of ketosis? I would say no to that one. Yeah, yeah. 
I actually went up a, a little bit, right. um, and you went down just a just right. a hair, which is not significant. Yep. All right. So, what what uh, are our results as far as putting it in your morning coffee when you are intermittent fasting, sweet and low? Is it a good idea? Inconclusive again. Yeah. It's kind of a sideways thumb. Yeah. So if it is giving Keith a bump in his blood glucose, that's not yeah, a good thing. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that, and then mixing it with fats like keto coffee and things like that. It's not yeah, a good idea. Not a good idea. And Tasted. Yeah. Yucky. Okay, on to day three. Hypothesis number three is that equal in our coffees will not spike our blood glucose or drop us out of ketosis. So equal is here again. This actually has uh, dextrose with maltodextrin. I'm not sure why they worded that way. And then aspartame. So dextrose, hidden name for sugar, maltodextrin, Glycemic yeah, index really high. 80, right. There's there's your sources are anywhere from 85 to 105. One of them even said 106 to 136. Right. Whereas table sugar has a glycemic index of 65. The glycemic index is is a measure of how it's affecting your your blood glucose. Right. So you are getting a blood glucose. Straight glucose is 100. That is like the, right. That's the kind right. Of the, so the this the is wor this is worse than just glucose. Yeah. And then they put aspartame in it, and aspartame. Uh, has a has some uh, sketchy back uh, backstory as as well. Yeah. Um, it's actually a, an excitotoxin, so it uh, which uh, causes the nerve cells of your brain to get excited to the, to the point it can cause death of the nerve At cells. At a certain dose, right? Right, right. We see aspartame in in diet sodas, Kool Aids, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, all right. So we didn't have high hopes, but no. um, we put a packet and a half in each of our coffees as the equivalent for sugar. And here are our results. All right. So Becky started with a ketone level of 1.7. Actually went up to 2.2. Um, that was pretty interesting. Came back down to 1.7 in 120 minutes. She was at 1.4. So she was a little bit lower in her ketones. Um, her blood glucose was at 94, went up to 105 back to 94 and then up to 103. It's kind of interesting, it went back and forth a couple of times over that time, mm -hmm. both and both your ketones and that. Yeah. So. And so when we look at my uh, results for equal, they're actually very similar to my results for sugar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so your blood glucose definitely went up um, a little bit and your ketones came down a little bit. But, yeah. but nothing, nothing's, I didn't really benefit from it. Right. right. Um, and then as far as your uh, ketones. Right. So my ketones, I actually started at 0.8 that morning. I was like super excited. And then I realized that I had to, to drink coffee with dextrose, maltodextrin, and aspartame yeah. in it. Yeah. I so that, 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 no, not happy again. So 30 minutes I had dropped to 0.5, then I had dropped to 0.4, so, you know, technically out of ketosis at that point. Then in 120 minutes I went, popped up back up to 0.6, so that was kind of interesting. Um, my glucose started at 101, went up to 114, back to 98, then back to 108. So again, we kind of see that kind of just, mm -hmm. it's bobbing there a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I think mine was, was kind of yeah. similar to what regular sugar was. Yeah. So, because I had, I was in ketosis when we did that one, uh, dropped out and then bounced back in at two hour mark. Yeah. So, so uh, equal kind of gave us a similar response to, to sugar. So, yeah. will equal uh, spike our insulin levels? With our blood glucose, it's possible. Mm -hmm. we it both, was a little we bit both of a went up. We yeah. were both on the way, on yeah. the way up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Will it knock us out of ketosis? Uh, it mm. it did me. It did for a short short time. I mean, we were. I don't know right. if we can say that that's statistically yeah. uh, Im important, but uh, it didn't do us any didn't do us any good. So still a little inconclusive, right? Yeah, putting it in our coffee in the morning for intermittent when we're intermittent fasting. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Inconclusive. I don't think you're doing yourself any favors. No. and with the dextrose and maltodextrin, I mean. I know. That's probably why we got similar to sugar. Kind yeah, of we were lumps. basically putting sugar right. in our coffee. Yeah, I don't know how much aspartame's in there, but yep. Okay. And 
it tasted yucky. So on to day four and hypothesis number four, uh, will Splenda in our morning coffee knock us out of ketosis or raise our blood glucose? All right, Splenda, ingredients, dextrose, maltodextrin, sucralose, sugar, sugar, sugar. Made sugar. from sugar. Right. Sucralose is, from, is uh, derived from sucrose, which is sugar. Table sugar, yeah. And, uh, but it's uh, like 600 times sweeter than, than sugar, so they can call it a non-caloric because it's so sweet. Um, but because it's so sweet, too, that's why they have to put the fillers in, like dextrose and, and maltodextrin. Um, Splenda is not a health food. No. We're not a fan. We're trying not to be biased, but we're not fans. Um, it, uh, it has been in, implicated in some things. If you have hypothyroidism, um, I have seen things that uh, it'll, it will block absorption of zinc and, uh, and iodine. iodine. Yeah. So it uh, might not be the best thing if you have uh, thyroid issues. So we put a packet and a half in our morning coffees, the equivalent of sugar. And here are the results that we got for Splenda. So, um, your ketones on day four started at 1.5, dropped a little bit to 1.4, dropped a little bit more to 1.2 at 60 minutes. At 120, you're still at 1.2. So, okay. definitely a little bit lower in there. Yep. Um, your glucose started at 94, went to 93, went to 92, went to 91. So, uh, negligible effect, okay. I would say, on glucose, right? Yep. Um, so... I started at 0.3 again, went to 0.3 again, mm -hmm. went down to 0.2, and then went back up to 0.3. Mm -hmm. So another happy day for me. Yeah. Um, my glucose was started at 116, pretty high. Went up to 119, down to 111, and then back up to 115. That, that's pretty high. Yeah. All right, so um, you know, if we look at these compared to our black coffee results, right. um, you know, so if you, if you look at mine independently, I, you'd say, oh, that didn't do too much to me. But if you compare that to my black coffee, black coffee boosted my um, ketones. ketones by like 0.9, right? This right. dropped my ketones. So 0.3, yeah. Yeah, so. not favorable for me for ketones. No. Whereas you, interestingly, right? You're Yours, your black coffee dropped you like 29 points. But the glucose is totally different. My glucose should be dropping. Right. You know, if through that two hours, if right. I'm not getting any food in. Right. Right. But when you took in Splenda, it kept your glucose kept it where up. where it was. So, will uh, Splenda in your coffee cause a rise in your blood sugar? Um, I would say. Or no, based on our results. Okay. Yeah. Uh, compared to black coffee, it's iffy. Compared to black coffee. Uh, yes. Will it uh, drop us out of ketosis? Possibly. You had a lowering effect. It, it had a lowering effect. That's right. a good way to put it. Right. Um, do we recommend putting, uh, based on our results, putting Splenda in your morning coffee when you're intermittent fasting? I, I it's, think it's, it's... It's... When we compare it to black coffee, it, it obviously had effects on ketones and yeah. blood glucose. Yeah. And uh, also our personal com conclusion on uh, Splenda. It tasted yucky. yucky. All right, so let's bring it on home. None, uh, we don't believe that any of these are good to be adding to your, your morning coffee, especially not to uh, a keto coffee with yep. added fats to it. Yeah. Um, they're just, they're, they're just, they're messing with your metabolism too yeah. much. Yeah, it, it really seems like either they're um, raising our ketones or lowering our ketones or raising our blood glucose, and you don't want you don't want either, either of those, those to be things. going on during your intermittent fast. Right. So, sorry. Sorry, and they taste yucky. <laughs> All right, hey, we have some other sweeteners in our uh, to-do list, so we will be bringing you some more sweeteners. But for right now, it's the packets and the stevia. We'd keep them out of your coffee. Sorry. See you next time.